without further ado, give a warm Kimberly welcome to Jay Ivey. What's going on, Gary? How y'all feeling? Good, man. Good, man. I, I love the, uh, the chants and the claps y'all got it going on, man. Y'all give it up for y'all selves. I want everybody to clap for themselves. So how many, how many writers do we have in the house tonight, today? We have a few. One, two, three, four, five. Y'all, who do you write? You write poetry, you write songs. You write raps. How many rappers do we have in the house? Now, how, now I just asked how many writers. <laughs> and you and you ain't raised your hand. And I say rappers. Y'all know that's writing, right? You know, people, you write raps. You know, you might want to write a movie. You might want to write a script. You know, write a play. Write a song. You know, and I've always found that writing is very therapeutic. Like, I, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Anybody from Chicago in here? Couple of y'all? All right. Anybody from Gary in here? All the hours. G.I. So um, I started performing in high school. And um, the reason I, I started performing was because of my English teacher. She had us write a, a prose for an English assignment. And after writing the assignment, she had everyone in class read it. So um, I read my piece. And then after class, she pulled me to the side. She was like, you have a nice speaking voice. I'm going to put you on the show. So, you know, I was, yeah, I was the shy kid, so, I, you know, I faked her out, you know, I didn't do the show. So she had another show come up, and she said, you know what, she's like, fake me out the last time, I had the show, you have to do it. So she put me on stage, and I was, I was nervous, my stomach was in knots, you know, felt like I was going to release some things, you know. <laughs> and um, I got on stage in front of, you know, a, a, a room full of, room full of, you know, students that were the same age as me, you know. And um, my first time ever on stage, I received a standing ovation. You know, and it, it, I was just so fulfilled with that feeling of getting on stage and just expressing myself and just, you know, it was such a release. It made me feel so much better. So later on, I, you know, I kept writing and then I added my poetry to perform it, which is now called Spoken Word. So y'all, everybody familiar with Spoken Word? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I started doing spoken word. I came back home to Chicago. I went to Illinois State, came back home to Chicago, and I hopped on the scene, and you know, one thing led to another. You know, some people would tell me, oh, you can't do that, a poet? Oh, man, you know, a guy ain't supposed to be writing poetry. That, oh, you're a punk, you, uh, you this, you that. So I had a lot of haters along the way. You know, but no matter how many haters I had, I had the same amount of positive people pushing me along to tell me, you can do that, you have a gift. You have an ability that everyone doesn't have, and you need to you need to to use that gift, you know. So I've been over the years. I've been, you know, taking my orders, and, and I've been sharing my gift with with the people around the around the country, around the world, you know. So I wanted to come here to Gary the GI. It's called Sarah. I was just a baby, two years old. Last time I thought my house was sold. No roof over my head, no blanket to cover me. You don't want to be like me, you see. I was curling the ball, left on the doorstep. Even when I was a baby, I was screaming for help. When I grew up, I was a fine-looking thing. <laughs> I need to write. I need to gather some words and write. I need to gather some thoughts and write. I need to write because I'm tired of hearing the same old pieces. I know y'all tired of hearing the same old pieces because the same old pieces got the same old problems. I got new problems, more problems. Problems have changed. Problems are rearranged. Oh, and since you like write poetry stuff, then like, do your poetry like more soft with problems when you like get really gloomy and sad? Uh, it doesn't <laughs> solve, totally solve the problem, but it definitely, definitely helps definitely helps because you know normally it'd be something that I wouldn't deal with at all and then when I write it I can see it I read it might you know I get in front of people and every time I you know it's, you know perform it you know it makes things feel a little bit better you know yes yes you do <laughs> that was the slowest stand up ever <laughs> Jamaica, 
Kyle, give it up for Jamaica. Y'all <laughs> give my man, y'all give my man a clap too. What's your name again? Steven. Steven. Whatever it is you want to do, whatever it is you believe in, whatever it is your heart, your mind, and your soul tell you to do, follow that. Don't let, because you know, everyone has their own paths, you know, so someone else's path might not, you know, necessarily agree with yours, you know, so you have to listen to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Keep it positive <coughs> always. And um, and with that, I've come to find, like, you know, with you know me being on my path, I've come to find that, that writing can be very therapeutic. Y'all know what therapeutic means, right? Yeah. yeah. You know? Okay, therapeutic is like it, something that's healing. I guess, you know, you do it because it, it makes you feel better. You know, therapy, like therapy. You know, people go to psychiatrists for therapy. So. For me, writing is therapeutic. I couldn't afford to go to no doctor, so I had my pen was my doctor, you know. So when I, I didn't know how to deal with things, you know, I would let my pen deal with them. You know, and I always tell people, if you don't deal with your emotions, one day your emotions go deal with you. So things that you go through, you know, different situations that may be hard to bear with, you know, it's, it's good to deal with those things and, and um, you know, and get them off your chest. Because if you don't, you know, they'll, they'll, come, they'll come back to you, you know. So I wrote this. I wrote this poem um, that I wanted to share with you guys, and um, I actually had the opportunity to do it on Deaf Poetry. And it's the piece it it may sound like a sad piece, but it's actually the happiest piece I ever wrote because it made me a much better person and a much better man, you know. And I know a lot of us go through the same thing, so it's something I I love to share because maybe it'll help you know heal you guys, you know. So uh, the poem is called Dear Father. Y'all heard it before? Yes. Oh, okay. Who said yes? Oh, okay. Just kidding. <laughs> so um, this is called Dear Father. I wish you could have seen me do my thing. I wish you could have been there the first time I sang. I wish you could have seen how your baby boy flow. I wish you could have seen me rock just one show. I wish you could have seen me do my thing. I wish you could have been there the first time I sang. I wish, I wish that you didn't have to go. I wish you could have seen me rock just one show. <coughs> Dear Dad, these words are being written and spoken because my heart and soul feel broken. I laugh to keep from crying, but I still haven't healed after all of my years of my goofiness and joking. You got me open, hoping this ill feeling will pass, won't last, I wear a mask, my peace won't ask for the truth. Truthfully speaking, the truth hurts, but I'm beyond hurting, I'm in pain. Why does it hurt so much? I find myself fighting with myself every day to remain sane. My peace think I changed, make me tripping off my fame, but I'm still the same, still the same old James. I wish I could be like Obama, because he is the first black nominated candidate for the next presidential election. <laughs> He has created a range that I'll bet you no one would ever touch. I love this man so much for giving a young black child like me a chance to be victorious or whatever. What are you saying? <laughs> 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 All right. Um, how, did you, how do you feel when you get up on stage? Oh, man. The feeling I have, I feel, sometimes I feel nervous. I feel powerful. I feel, I feel confident. I feel like it's my world. Like I can just do whatever I want to do and say whatever I want to say. I feel free. The song's called Dream Big. I'm gonna do this verse for y'all. And um I want y'all to remember these words and take these words with y'all as y'all go. Okay? Alright, and always remember it. Like it's very important that you guys tell your story. There's only one you in the world. Alright? There's only one person with your set of eyes in the world. Only one person with your viewpoint of the world. So it's important that you tell your story. All right? You guys are all individual. You're all unique. You're all beautiful. <coughs> you're all strong. You're all powerful. All right? So make sure you tell your story. And don't let nobody else take your story from you. Because they're going to try and save you. All right? All right. <coughs> all right. <coughs> True life may seem at an all-time low. You've tried everything, but you can't seem to find your flow. So success comes slow and problems tend to grow. 
You seen your friends shine like it's 100 degrees while you chilling at 10 below. It's cold out here, it's freezing. The bad times are increasing. Bad energy is all that your surroundings are releasing. So misery's been feasting on your soul. Vices grab hold and lows get heavy. You feel so heavy, but you can't block your blessings. When they come your way, you gotta be ready, ready to receive. You gotta shake off the fear and believe. Cause at times we're tested, tested to see how strong we really are, how far we really go. There's an army growing, but you can't join unless you you know what you're fighting for.